What's going on everybody? This is Daryl LeBerry here with Lab Work. Um, and today we have a special surprise for you. Uh, we got RJ Godfrey, who is one of the top forwards in the country. And I, I was reluctant to say forward because he can play point guard, he can play shooting guard, he can play small forward, power forward, he can play center, he can play whatever you need him to play. And he can score the ball in a lot of different ways. He's a great kid. He has a ton of energy. I think you guys are gonna love him. And I'm, I'm happy that you guys are gonna get the opportunity to know him as a person off the court as well. This is one of the next big names in college basketball. His name is RJ Godfrey, North Gwinnett High School. Daryl LeBaird Lab Works. Looking forward to bringing him to you. What's going on, RJ? How you doing, man? Good, how are you? All right. You looking forward to today? Yes, sir, for sure. All right, man. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a little bit of film work, kind of explain how versatile you are and all the different things you can do on the court. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit 94 feet in the lab so we can get to know you off the court so people can get to know your personality. And then lastly, if you want to, I don't know if you're ready for this, we'll probably do a three-point contest. I'm ready. You sure? Yes, sir. Let's get it. So, RJ, man, this goes back to your uh, sophomore year. We talked mm. about it a little bit off air. This is, uh, you're playing against a big name, a uh, guy who's somewhat your position, or you were anticipating playing against him. And so kind of give us your thoughts as a sophomore, you know, good player coming up, but not well-known playing against a well-known player. What were you thinking going into that game? Yeah, so I was really hyped. Uh, playing against Robbie, well, try uh, anticipating Robbie because he was super high at the uh, time. Everybody yeah. in Georgia was going crazy over him. So for the game, I was so like, I was so locked in for that game. But and when I saw him on the bench, the he hurt his uh, thumb or something like that. I mean, I really, I really broke me. But I still got to play against a great Daryl team and got the W that night. Because I'm pretty sure this is a team that still won state uh, uh, that year. I think they were one state that year. Yeah. Not in your classification, but in a different yeah. classification. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So. In this play right here, you're running in transition. Um, this shows a little bit, kind of like the beginning of your athleticism. I don't know if we want to give you credit for a dunk or not on this. I'll, I'll let you claim that or not claim that. But kind of talk about, you know, what you were thinking back then uh, with your athleticism and finishing around the rim versus where you're at now or what kind of finish you think you'll have in the same situation. So I would really call this like a grazer, I guess. Okay. But at the time, I thought I was hit at the rim. I thought I was <laughs> up there, but on film it looked uh, – Look weaker, but um, I mean, I tried to punch on him because uh, 15 Jared, he's always taught me to dunk on everybody okay. under the rim and stuff. But uh, but I had a lot of momentum going into it, but I just went up, I exploded it up. But I mean, on film, it looked okay. <laughs> I promise you, in person, it looked real, real, real nice. So, if we get that same scenario this season, exact same situation, what's the difference in your two years later maturity versus I'm, back then? I'm getting higher, I'm going. So I kind of went away from him a little bit. Yeah. But I'm going towards more of the middle of the rim and I'm punching it hard. So, so now it's more with more physicality and you're kind of jumping through the contact versus kind of avoiding the contact like you would have been as a younger player. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so I would say my body is uh, more physically yeah, prepared. Right? Yeah, developed yeah. more since sophomore year. So this is here a guy Jared you just talked about a couple of different times. This is a little bit of a high low action, and I think you know. As we'll see throughout these clips, you're very versatile. You can do a lot of different things, but obviously one thing that you do really well is moving without the ball and, and finishing around the rim. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of talk to us about, you know, how you learn that feel for where to move, where not to move, and how to catch and have, you know, soft hands. Did you play football at any point? Kind of just trying to figure out how you got to where this is a strength of yours. Well, me and Jared, throughout the whole season, we ran a lot of high low because we played a lot of teams that weren't as big as us. Yep. So in practice, we practiced a lot of, because we didn't have a lot of uh, like uh, inbound passes and stuff, like the bad passes. So trying to like practicing how to catch bad passes. And I also played uh, football until eighth grade. Okay. Uh, I played defense though, but I still had pretty good hands. <laughs> but uh, I think, but I think just practicing with J.I. and uh, Coach Wiedemann in practice okay. uh, really strengthened my hands to catch that pass right there. Uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, I think you're one of the most versatile players in the country. Mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what position do you see yourself as we move into this next clip where you just go from getting a high low on one clip, beautiful high low, nice finish at the rim, too big. Then the next clip, they inbound the ball to you and you're, you're initiating offense, break a man down and you get all the way to the rim. I mean, it just shows back-to-back -back clips is almost kind of, kind of led into what I was saying with your versatility. What do you see yourself as, as a player, what position, and then um, what do you enjoy doing most? Well, I really don't see myself as like one position. Yep. I'm a positionless player. Yep. Uh, like a lot of NBA guys are turning into positionless player. I think I'm a category guy as a, uh, a positionless player, but 
Uh, if I had to pick one position, I would say the three. Okay. Like a point forward, kind of, but I can play the five, I can play the four, I can guard the five. I can run the one, just as you can see. Yeah. I, run a lot of, I ran a lot of one uh, last year and the year before, so I, mean, I can really play anywhere on the court, uh, depending on what team we're playing, like the side advantage and stuff. But it all depends on really like the team we play. On the mismatches and what's the most advantageous for your team. Uh, what did you enjoy the most, though? What do I enjoy the most? Yeah, that smile tells me it's something that you definitely enjoy the most. Uh, I think I think the one probably. <laughs> Everybody enjoys the one because yeah. you want to have the ball and make yeah. plays. All right, now we got another clip right here um, where they kicked it out and you got a, train, a, a three right here. I think this is something that obviously you do really well. Um, obviously, I think you get better at it if I'm being completely yeah. honest with you, and everybody can. Yeah. Um, but where are you in your you know your your perimeter shooting and you know obviously the way the game is going, everybody has to be able to shoot the ball from three. So. You know, what work have you done? What do you think you got to get better at when, as far as shooting the ball? So I think I made my uh, my really really good improvement uh, this last spring headed into AAU. So when I played those two weeks at AAU. Yep. I shot just lights out. So yep. I was just hitting from everywhere. But uh, after the injury, of course, I still did a lot of shooting drills in my cast and my boot. Uh, I got a lot of videos from a lot of big time people to help me work on my shooting. Nice. And uh, but. Like in workouts, I'm lights out too. Like that's the best I've ever been shooting uh, in these uh, four-on-one workouts. Okay. But I think my shot this year, I'm definitely gonna show a lot of people that I'm I'm very consistent from the outside. I think so too. Three. I agree. Now the next play, uh, again going back to versatility. Um, now you catch the ball at the top of the key, and you know most guys that are your size go into some type of dribble handoff or they reverse the ball and go into a ball screen. You're skilled enough where you can go into a one-on-one -on -one situation and make a play. So tell us what you saw right here, um, and then and then give us an explanation of why you decided to go into the move that you went into. Yeah, so this was actually the game with a bucket that game. So oh, nice. uh, before that, we were all bobbing the ball. We were like, who's going to take the last shot? We were all like, you see Jared. And you're a sophomore at that point. Yeah, so everyone's just like, oh, what are we going to do? So. I mean, I was at a weekend defender on me the whole game. I thought I attacked him pretty good well, the whole game. But uh, so I just, I mean, I, I love using my body since probably ninth grade. So yeah. I, mean, I thought if I just, uh, I'll, I'll power him to the basket, I would get an open look, which I did. So, I mean, we won the game off that bucket. So I'm, I'm very glad I made that move. Is this kind of a moment or a situation that gave you the confidence to realize, you know, because you, you always think you're one of the better players, but until you're in those situations and you have to make big time plays, you never really know. Was that a moment for you to kind of say, you know, I've kind of arrived and I, I'm ready to show how good a player I am? Yeah, so you, I, if you see uh, number 14 in the corner, he was, he was scared because I've never like shot at top. <laughs> he put his hands on his head. Yeah. He didn't know what was going on. So at the time, I thought I was capable of like, like no, nobody really thought I was like, Make a big time play like that. Time I was so young and yeah. like, I didn't have much experience. But like after the game, he told me he was just like good shot, man. He had me scared. But after that, like I was just like chill. I I, I can take any shot I want, really. Nice. Uh, so all right, great, man. So right here, you talked about it earlier. Um, one of the ways that you guys prepare for catching passes is inbounds passes, throwing bad passes. Mm -hmm. And we got a baseline out of bounds play here where the guy kind of falls asleep. Looks like there's a little bit of confusion. I don't, don't know who's guarding who. Uh, so tell us what you saw. Um, and is that something that happened frequently or is it just kind of a read and what happened in the natural progression of the game? So I remember that thing exactly. So me and JR, we were looking eye to eye the whole time uh, when the referee gave him the ball. So I already knew, like he already like it was like an eye to eye thing. So I already knew to cut straight to the basket because no one was on me. Yep. So but why when I got it, I thought I had like two people behind me. So I just exploded up and put it down. But uh right there, that play is really meant for me to go to the other side and attack. But I mean defense wasn't ready. So, so you just, just made the read and yeah, went to the ultimate yeah, play. Quick play. Yeah. Great IQ play that you know it might not show up in the stat sheet, but it shows that you know you have a feel for the game. Mm -hmm. Right here we got a and it looks like we got a little tap the head action at the end too. We got a nice little lob and transition right here, and this shows going from year to year. So sophomore year, you get what you call the grazer. Now you're catching lobs and transition. So talk to us a little bit about what you saw in that play. And again, is that something that you know frequently happened, or this is just kind of one of those things that happened in the, in the natural progression of the game? Yeah. So I rarely catch lobs, really, but uh, 
I have to tap my head at the end because that was our best player, uh, Chris Youngblood. Yeah. Probably one of the best players I ever played in my life. He's at Kennesaw State now. Yeah, he's yeah. real, real, really, really strong, really skilled for his size too. He's really big, but uh, I had to tap my head. Just, just I don't know. <laughs> I just had to. But, uh, I mean, I didn't know Jared was going to throw the lob. I didn't tell him to throw the lob, but uh, I mean, I just went up and got it. But that's like probably the only, like, only time you see me. Uh, catch a lob, so they don't throw you a lot of lobs, or you just don't finish uh, them a lot. I just, I mean, they don't really throw me uh, lobs. I just, I like, I I'd rather get it down, and explode up, rather okay. than just explode up and then catch it in the air. But I mean, I can do anything. So, going back to your versatility, here we got uh, kind of pass where you hit the pinch post area, cut off of him, almost like a UCLA cut, cut into the rim. And again, it just shows your ability to do a lot of different things. So instead of having to beat your man off the dribble. You're able to hit and go right into a nice little easy post up action where you're probably going to have a size advantage nine times yeah. out of ten. Yeah, so this is our main play we really want like every year. It's called Pinch. Don't uh, tell everybody the name of your play. Well, they already know. We've been running it for the last two years, so they should have already scouted that. But uh, we run this, uh, I don't know how many times a game, but I mean, I, I haven't seen anyone stop it. But it really like those defense off because I'm taking the ball to the court. Exactly. So typically you want to have like a big man or a player on me. So uh, when I give it to the elbow, it's just like they got to choose what they're going to do. So, I mean, but they. Is it just they to go off either direction or do you go off pretty much the same direction? Um, it's really a read. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I typically pick the same side, but right there, uh, they, they stayed and I just went up fast. Because they, they that, that game they were bringing the, they were they were just coming with a quick double yeah, team. It looked every, like they were trying to get to you, but it just yeah. happened too quick for them. Yeah, every play. This one right here looks like y'all ran some kind of diagonal post up again. You had a, a mismatch. Uh, you catch it over here on the left block, and you dribble into the middle and just say, "I'm just bigger and more athletic." It was kind of like the feel yeah. I got when I saw that play. Yeah, I think we originally had a play on the left side of the court, but we mis misran it, but. I felt that I had a mismatch on me, so I just ran okay. the block. So this is a read. This wasn't even yeah. a play. Yeah, I, like most of our plays are reads, really. Like, all, like really, all of our plays are reads in our offense. So, so I know you like to handle the ball and initiate offense. Do you? Do you also enjoy though posting up when you oh, have a mismatch sure. and taking advantage of that? For sure, that's probably my second favorite part. Like, just having someone on my back and just trying to, like, not I don't say muscle them, just making a move or trying to explode up over them is probably really it was super fun. So. So I see you're used, you know, in a lot of different ways with your high school team. And I would imagine that whatever college you go to is going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're playing AAU or you're at camps, what things do they kind of do? They try to pigeonhole you in a certain thing or do they allow you to play your yeah. game and be a little bit more free flowing and loose? Uh, most of the time, they allow me to play my game. But I really play the same everywhere, really. Uh, yeah. Like you'll see me post up at camps and uh, Stuff like that. You see me bring the ball about her rebound and stuff. I mean, I really play my game. I, I'm going to play my game the same way no matter where I go. Well, typically. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's, a really, that's really it. Here you are right here, kind of, uh, you catch the ball on the wings, and it looks like the defender kind of guesses and gambles, and he gets out of position. Uh, good player. He's at Clemson now, isn't he? Yeah. Um, so when you see him make that decision, obviously this is another read that you make. What are you thinking, and why did you, you know, attack the basket and finish the way you did? So uh, I know, like they they threw uh, different matches at me the whole game with him and Taj Kelly. Uh, so trying to put a little size and athleticism on. Yeah. So uh, just for me, like I thought I was way faster than Ian. So every time I got the ball, I really attacked him. But right there, I didn't know. Like I didn't, I didn't expect. To dunk it right there, I just exploded off my left, and I just I was just higher than expected, so I just went up and put it down. But that's a uh, little bit better than Grazer. Yeah, before. for sure. But uh, I know uh, I think Matumbo and Steve Smith got that game, so I had to put on the show for them. So. Nice. So yeah. you pay attention to who's all at the games, and you feed off the energy from the crowd. Uh, I feel like every the crowd, but not like who's at the game. Like, okay. But Matumbo uh, and Steve Smith are a little different. Yeah. So they walked in near our bench. And I was just like. Why are they here? So I was just like, let me just put on the show. So, but uh, we should have, we should have blown them out. We were, we were up big. We were up big. Good we, team, though. You know, yeah. obviously, probably, I don't know if y'all consider it a necessarily a natural rivalry. But yeah. when you're two teams from the same county that are good, some of the better teams, it's going to feel like a rivalry game. Yes, yeah, for sure. So we got a couple plays back to back here we're going to talk about. The first one, you're catching the ball 
uh, on the right block or the left block if you're facing the rim. Uh, you quick spin move, which is a, is a really hard move to make, and you maintain your balance and finish. Is that something that you work on, or is that, again, just something that you played and you just naturally do? Yes, sir. So my dad, he was the post the post god in, uh, in uh, high school. So we were outside a lot working on post moves, and he taught me that that spin and that, uh, that with the, I think it was my right hand, right hand. To have yeah. a, not really hooked, but have it's a, a hook. Box. It's a hook. It's a, yeah. it's a hook. We'll go mm -hmm. call it what it is. Yeah. So he taught me to, uh, how to use my off hand, yeah. you know, how to do the spin and stuff, because he used that uh, a lot in high school. So, okay. I mean, me, I really got my post game from Coach Wiedemann and my dad. So. Okay. Nice. But, yeah, that move is really from my dad. Then this next play again, man. I mean, it's just amazing to see the difference in the plays back to back and the same player able to do it. So now you're just coming down to transition and just talk to us about, you know, what you saw here and what you did. Yeah, so that's really the same move from the last play. So, uh, I mean, Different I can- angle on the court though. Yeah, so I can really translate those moves I use in the low post. I mean, to, I mean, like when I'm dribbling. So I just uh, spin back to my, was it my right? So I got him on my left side. Yeah. I, I mean, I beat him. And I got an open uh, layup off that. So I don't know if it was open. You made it look open, but it, it's 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 heavily contested. Yeah, man. that's a big time play right there. Yeah. Man. When you're talking to college coaches, what do they say? They envision. How do they envision using you? And how do they envision? And I mean, I, I don't always like to have this talk with guys because I think sometimes it can become premature. And I want to make sure that I say you need to trust the process, keep grinding, keep working, and just see whatever happens. But I'm sure the college coaches are telling you uh, that we're going to help you develop into a pro. So yeah. when they say that, what are they? How are they saying they plan on using you in their offenses? And then what do they say they're going to do to get you better to help you become to a point where you get to the next level? Yeah. So no college coaches really put me at a set position. They all think I'm been very versatile too, nice. and they always uh, talk about how they're going to play me at different positions because I am uh, pretty positionless. So, but they they just talk about developing me, like my my outside game and my inside game. Yeah, because I already, uh, I mean, most of them love my body and love what I can like what I can already do. So it's just a matter of just developing like that outside jumper and like the, my, all my uh, off the dribble stuff. So, okay. what are, what are some must haves for you and uh, not only the school socially that you're gonna go to, but also the system or the team that you're gonna go to? Like like, like they have to be able. To, this has to be there for me to feel comfortable. Just like. Just like a fun environment where I'm having fun every day. I mean, there's not really like one thing that's gonna be like, like, yeah, I'm like, I must go there because of this. It's just like, I mean, if the camaraderie on the team and just the, like the like the love and the fun is, is high, yep. you know, I mean, I had to be there. So, because I'm a energetic, loud guy. I so, can see. I can see. Uh, I mean, just just all the camaraderie and stuff. The teamwork got to be there for me to go. And another play where it looks like you get a defensive rebound or some kind of loose ball. And now you're bringing the ball up, a quick around the back move on a guard at that. And now again, the patented spin move and look at the finish at the rim. Just kind of talk mm -hmm. to us about, you know, how you saw and how you saw this play develop. Yeah, so I saw uh, number one come from my uh, my left my, my left side. So I just made a quick behind the back move because I know he wasn't gonna uh, like pick me up for a court because they weren't picking up for a court. So I just made a quick move around him and that same move that I used against. Uh, Taj down low, you know, I used against him just to get around him, and I used that off arm. And I went up against uh, Taj at the, uh, uh, at the layup to draw contact, and they called it a hand one. Is there a chance you're ducking this this year? Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right. I've been ducking like a lot of those in practice too. Nice, so. nice. I feel bad for the guys in practice, man. Yeah. <laughs> like I said before, man, I, and I truly believe this, you're one of the most versatile players in the country. Uh, I think you're very underrated, uh, and I just think it's because a lot of people haven't seen you. So um, I really enjoy spending time with you, man. You're a great kid, great personality. I'm looking forward to you beating up on a lot of people this year. Moving yes, forward sir. in the future, man. Thanks yes, for spending sir. time with us, man. Thank you. All right, 94 feet in the lab or RJ Godfrey. First question is, uh, who do you have in your playlist? A lot of Playboy Cardi, a lot of Yeet. Not a lot of people know about Yeet, but he's up, up and coming. Yeet. Uh, is that yeah. his name? Yes, sir. <laughs> then no one uh, knows about him. Nobody knows about him, but he's on the come up. Okay. Uh, also, Tyler, the creator. And there's a lot, uh, I listen to a lot of alternative music, so okay. uh, Vacations is someone who I listen to a lot, so. Nice, okay. All right, uh, what's your favorite basketball shoe? Favorite basketball shoe is probably uh, the LeBron 17s. I have one pair of those, but I never wear them, but they're super comfortable. Okay. I love all my LeBron shoes, but 
Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite lifestyle shoe? Favorite lifestyle shoe, Crocs or Vans. I can't wear like tennis shoes around. I always gotta have the the chill, the chill shoes on. So. All right. Would you uh, rather cook or would you rather go out for a meal? I'd rather cook for breakfast but go out for dinner. What's your breakfast specialty? Uh, bacon, and eggs. bacon and eggs. I'm the best at cooking eggs. <laughs> Does anybody else confirm that, or is that you think you're uh, the best? At my brother and my mom, they might say different, but I think I'm the best okay. uh, chef in the, uh, at breakfast. Are you a mama's boy or a daddy's boy? <sighs> it's hard. I would say daddy's. Daddy's boy. Okay. Uh, does your dad, anybody else in the family play basketball? Uh, my brother's gonna play this year, so. But my dad played basketball in high school. All right, so when's the last time you guys played one on one and who won the game? Ninth grade, I stumped my dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is Terrell the Bear with RJ Godfrey in the lab. All right, we got lab work with RJ Godfrey. Uh, we usually do a little bit of a kind of a one on one session where we do some basketball work. My man forgot his shoes, and you see he got his toes out. Uh, so we're going to go with three point contest. Um, we're in his gym, but I'm going to allow him to shoot first and see if he can get comfortable because it's going to get ugly late. We're going to play horse. All right, I'll go from the top first. Hold on, I need two shots though first. All right, I'll give you two shots. All right, I needed that. That's one. No, I needed that. I needed that. All right, there we go. Let's go. All right, we'll start from the top first. All right. Yeah. Ah, this is going to be quick. This is going to be quick, guys. You see how pretty that thing looks? <laughs> you can't teach that. You can either do that or you can't do that, RJ. That's it. All right. You look like a guy who can't shoot from the corner. Oh man, that hurt. Ah, uh, I'm gonna get that hurt. I'm gonna get right here on this wing. This is my hot spot. That's your hot spot on the wing? Yes, sir. All right. I'm trying to hold your follow through and lock in and concentrate. H, you got the corner. Did you see that roll around like that? Ah, you're not a corner guy, RJ. I can tell you, you're not a corner guy. Come on, right back there. Don't go nowhere. Ah, Don't go nowhere. Stay right there. <laughs> oh, that's off. Dang. We should get two letters for that. That should be H-O. We're going to the other corner now. All right. I'm glad you started walking. I saw you, walk I saw you walking when I shot it. <laughs> Cash though. That's o. o. That's O. That's O. This your hot spot? You said this is your hot spot? Yeah, that's my hot spot. All right. It's my hot spot too. Let's go. All right, we're going to stay away from your hot spot. I'll go in between your hot spot and the corner. You just know, now I see you. You're just trying to walk over. You know what's going to happen already now? Woo! Oh. All right, you missed this one for sure. We're going to go to your hot spot, but I'm going off the glass. All right. Ooh. All right. I got, I got a unique one. Left hand at the NG. Oh, so you want to go trick shots now. OK. Oh! <laughs> yeah. We're going right back to three. I don't want. I don't want to do any trick shots. You got R two, R to H. Ooh, that's S. All right. All right, let me lock in. I'm about to lock in. Lock in, please do. We're going out of bounds right here. You knew what was going to happen. Don't even try to act like you didn't know. I got in the gym range, man. As soon as I walk in here. <sighs> this is game, isn't it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's game, isn't it? Hey, it's happened to the best of them, man. <laughs> Just another victim along the list, man. Horse with, with RJ Godfrey, man. Had a great time. RJ, man, I appreciate you letting me get the three-point no win. I know you don't lose a lot in this gym. Uh, you're one of the best players in the country, man, so I appreciate it. As a token of my gratitude, I want to give you a lab work shirt. Got the North Gwinnett emblem on the back. 
Really appreciate you spending some time with us today, man. No problem. Thank you for everything, man. Enjoyed it. Sir, me too. This is RJ Godfrey, and you're watching Lab Work.